practice 15 for us, uh, it was a good spring. Uh, we were limited on some numbers, uh, especially at certain spots. Uh, down a few D tackles with Uso out and uh, offensive line, we had a lot of bodies. Uh, we were down a little bit at, uh, at linebacker and wide receiver, just down with some aches and pains and, and some uh, soft tissue things. But uh, everybody should be back up and running for sure by the 1st of June. We, we made some really good strides, especially with a lot of young players that uh, maybe had just been in the program a year uh, that we're going to have to count on, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams. So um, guys did a really good job and, and excited for what's next. Yeah, um, we did a little bit of that this spring, but not a ton of it, of really doing some four down stuff, um, whether that's on early downs or on third down. We had some plans and some things, but we had some injuries and we weren't able to do it all. But you saw some things uh, over spring where we'd have four, four D linemen and really three D, D ends and one D tackle. That's Avery evolved this spring. Really well. I think he and Coach Wells are a really good match. They, they have really. Uh, good connection and, and do a really good job of, of communicating and uh, I sit on a decent amount of the QB meetings and, and just seeing his growth and um, seeing him take the things that we talk about in the meeting room to the grass with practice and then in the team settings it's been it's been fun to see him evolve. Is it kind of unique how good of a leader he is? He's, he's a freshman in college. I know it. I know it. Well he got thrust into that pretty quickly and uh, I think the greatest thing was his three-week window uh, where he had a bunch of older offensive linemen, and then it was him. Uh, and, and they we put him into some challenging situations to lead during that month of December. Uh, and then just having that flow of a football game that he played in the Pop-Tarts Bowl where he had success, then we had some adversity, and then he had success again. Uh, I think that gave him some confidence as well. Uh, and he's always been a, a guy that competes his tail off, whether it's if we'd have a winter conditioning, he's winning most of the races. If it's uh, strength and conditioning, he's one of the last, uh, first guys in, last guys out. So he's got that kind of that MO of, of being a leader and, and the guys see how hard he works. How much has the offense changed, do you think, in one spring with the A lot. A lot. But we're not going to go much further than that. We're doing a lot of similar things, but a lot of different things as far as some run scheme stuff. Uh, but then in the pass game, uh, we're, we're doing some things to get the ball on the perimeter a little bit more um, and, and taking some shots downfield. Once again, we were down some numbers at wide receiver, but just my dialogue with, uh, uh, with Riles and, and Wellesley, there's some things that uh, are going to be different that people have not seen here. Yeah, he had, a, he had a shoulder, but he'll be back by summer. Okay, so you won't miss no, no. Um, who the leaders are, really. You know, you think about it. Um, some of you guys went to college. Some of you guys got through college. Uh, we go four straight weeks after spring break, and our day, Monday through Friday, starts at 6 a.m. And we had zero people late. We were starting meetings early uh, and beforehand, and it's those kids holding each other accountable uh, on little things, whether it's uh, meals to workouts to meeting times. Uh, our guys were really locked in, and uh, it's a credit to our older guys. It's a credit to the to the culture and to the to the guys that uh, are leading each room. It's one thing that that we we push this year is to try to find a really good uh, leader on each position or in each position, and we have that. I don't know if we had that last year. We had really good leadership, but not at every position. We've got somebody that's stepping up at every position and holding their, their teammates accountable, and it's really helped us. Is there any position group that's uh, maybe surprised you with uh, positive? Well, we've got some really talented defensive defensive ends for sure, and not you know Uso was doing individual, but he didn't do team stuff. We, we're really deep on the defensive line in general, and so yeah, we'll find some ways to get uh, four guys on the field quite a bit. Um, the safety position's got a lot of depth right now. Um, you know, Siegel, everybody knows about. VJ was held out because of an off-season deal. Colby McAllister was held out because of an off-season deal. But uh, um, guys like Jack Fabris, that is a year into the program. Program uh, Wesley Fair, Mikey Bergeron, uh, Jordan Riley, a transfer. Those guys have really stepped up and is and have made us uh, a lot better and a lot deeper in the in the secondary. Uh, 
Um, James White, I'll, I'll tell you right there. I mean, that's a, a guy that with us holding DJ some, he practiced a little bit, but then we then we started to shelve him. James is getting a lot better uh, and, and fits because he's so explosive. Uh, Garrett Oakley, and I think guys saw a little bit of that in, in the bowl game, but uh, I think the, the sky's the limit for Oak. Um, a healthy Keegan Johnson. I think Keegan's one of the best wide receivers in the Big 12, and we got to keep him healthy. Uh, bringing in Dante Cephas uh, it was, a, was a really good get for us, and he fits in really well. Um, Jaden Jackson's playing well. Jace was limited a little bit this, this spring with an injury. Um, Sterling Lockett, I thought, made some great strides uh, and playing a lot faster. Spivey's playing a lot faster. Andre Davis uh, is playing a lot faster. So, you know, who's going to be to the front when we get to the end of fall camp? It's really good competition in there, but there are certain guys that have really good skill sets. We've got to find ways to get on the field because the names that I mentioned, it's a lot of guys, um, but uh, we need more than just three or four wide receivers. We need seven, eight guys to be uh, productive for us. <laughs> really, really good. Um, uh, he's a physical guy. He's got um, really good length. He gets challenged every day. I think that's the thing that he was most excited about uh, of coming here is every day in practice, whether it's Toby, whether it's Cheedy, whether it's Ryan Davis or Jordan Allen, as well as our older guys that we held out some, the Mots and, and stuffs, he's getting challenged every day. And he feels like he needed that challenge to push himself. But uh, he's for sure a guy that's already in our rotation just through the spring, uh, how, many, how many we get to that rotate, rotation of six, seven, eight. But he's in that for sure. Yeah, it was it was good. We unfortunately, because of our uh, D tackle situation and linebacker, we didn't do as much double rep things uh, where we were getting both fields going. But uh, you know, I think the, the challenge for those guys is to get with our quarterbacks and make sure that they keep rolling. Um, with seven on seven and some routes on air and different things so that uh, they can continue to get uh, uh, on, on the right page and on the same page. But uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of new bodies there. Has this been a, look like you had from the first year, has this been a good recruiting uh, opportunity for you, even though it's not public? Like yeah, a um, couple things. It, it was a big parent day today uh, for us. We had a lot of parents back. Uh, and then we've been averaging about 30 guys on Saturdays to come in here. And then Tuesday and Thursday, we've probably been getting four or five guys uh, on, on all those days and then a handful on Friday. You know, I don't like to have 70 or 80 recruits in here at once. You just can't get around to all of them. You know, I was able to meet everybody that came in today uh, before the meeting started, but just getting enough people exposed when you come in and watch, A, how we practice, I think is impressive uh, because we got everybody doing reps and the fact of selling that facility. I mean, this is the second spring we've been in there, and what a game changer that is for us uh, to be able to open up the garage doors and go inside and go outside and have all that field space. I think people come in and say, wow, uh, great facilities and everything's really centrally located. Uh, it's been a really big plus for us. How, you, how excited are you coming out of spring heading into, into summer? Uh, I'm excited. We've got a long ways to go. Um, we've found some guys that we've talked about today that that have making the, made the next step. Now it's all the guys that missed some springtime of getting those guys caught up and up to speed. Because in the summer, it's a lot of time with Coach True and it's a lot of time with um, the captain's practices where they're doing it on their own. But uh, we're excited. We've got a long ways to go, but we're, we're excited about the, the initial group we have. The portal opens Monday. How much anxiety do you have over that situation? How do you work against it? You know, uh, we had a conversation about it in a team meeting today. Um, it's it's not going anywhere. It uh, we, we expressed what we wanted the guys to be here. Um, you know, with name, image, and likeness at Kansas State improving really well, and it, it really has. I think that'll help us um, keep everybody. And that was our main focus with NIL for uh, myself and Clint Brown, uh, our director of roster management, was to take care of the guys on the football team so they didn't leave. And that's something that uh, I, I'm really excited about because. Uh, Curry Sexton and the collective have done a really good job of, of helping us. Uh, now, for those guys to be reached out by the collective will be really good over the next couple weeks to keep them here. And uh, you know who all our best players are. we got to make sure that those guys know that, that the value they have is really good here and that we're going to do everything we can 
to make sure we do keep those guys because um, they want to be at K-State, and, and we've really done some great strides in NIL. Yeah, we did a little bit of it this spring. We got to have some more conversations uh, when we go to Big 12 days and stuff. I think it's positive, but it's not going to end all the sign stealing that everybody's worried about because unless you're going to be in a huddle the whole time, you still have to signal an awful lot, but you get the opportunity to talk to the, to the QB uh, and talk to a defensive player. We utilized it in a number of settings. Um, we're still trying to figure it out how, how best to utilize it because it's not going to take away what I think a lot of us maybe would have hoped, but I think when you look at the landscape of everybody in no huddle, you're still going to have to signal. I'll let you know on Monday. Uh, it has made, uh, he's taken a ton off of my plate that um, you and I spoke in December. It was a bad, bad month. It was a really hard month. And um, there's, you can't do everything uh, as, as a head coach. And our assistants and sports staff do a great job, but I needed some help. I needed some people to take some things off of my plate. And Clint's done a really good job of that, uh, whether it's visiting with our players. And it's good because you know, Clint is the director of roster management. Has also been a former defensive coordinator, uh, longtime coach. knows knows the business, knows our players because he's been here as an analyst. Um, so they can't snow him. He he knows about them um, from the weight room to the field to the classroom, as well as he's got a really good pulse because he's contacted all these other roster management guys and GMs throughout at least Power Four uh, to come up with ideas and plans because we've got to hopefully, um, have, have, I know we have a good plan at K-State, now we've got to implement it. How have you seen Coach Rabbit and Coach Wells kind of settle into their roles and kind of mesh together? Yeah, I think it's a work in progress. They, they do a phenomenal job together, uh, but it's going to be a work in progress, just um, the dialogue that they have. In, in meetings, it's great, no issues. We have, it's been fun to have those guys go back and forth and, and add the other three coaches we have in there. Once we get to the fall, how are we best going to integrate everybody as far as where's, where's Matt going to be, where's Connor going to be from field to, to sideline, and, and um, who else can help? You know, um, you know, where are we going to put BA and stuff? There's another thing that's coming out of with, with analysts, and if they're going to allow those guys to coach on game day, if they're going to allow them to coach in, in, in practice and stuff, um, if they allow them to do some things on game day, it'll free up probably uh, or make us have some more decisions to make. Kenny's got to get to the Masters. The leader's about to go. Oh, OK. <laughs> when, when would you like to have the future of your center? Um, well, it's interesting. Probably not through end of, end of fall camp, but uh, I, I like the depth we have there. I think Sam Heck's done a terrific job. And, and Sam earned a scholarship. He was the backup to, uh, to Gilly and earned a scholarship at semester. And, he, he's been a really good player for us. He's very physical, very athletic. Um, you know, we hope that he takes the reins of it. But, you know, we're trying Hadley there. We're trying some other guys there. Cap, Cap's doing a really good job. Um, so, um, you know, we like the depth we have in the O-line. And I know we lost a lot of O-linemen uh, from last year, but TP's still back. Bubs is still back. Carver's still back. We still have some pretty good players. And uh, Liney's really made the next step. So is Pastore.